and the Holy Bible, and of course I mean the King James Bible, we read something extremely important. Let's say that um, Christendom, Christianity, religion rarely, rarely sees this. And if they do, they don't get it because unless you rightly divide the word of truth according to what is written in Second Timothy 2.15 and you study the revelation of the mystery given by the risen Christ to the Apostle Paul, you might not get this. You see, this is a simple chart. You read past, now, future. The past, the present, the future. This is a very neat way of dividing or seeing the the, the Holy Scripture, the 66 books in a line. Like, you know, this is the prophecy of Christ, the prophetic program, you see? It will start, it will go from Genesis through Malachi, including the four Gospels, and we, we practically reach at Acts chapter 8. Let's play it again. Prophecy of Christ, law to Israel in the earth. This section here goes from Genesis, even though the, the law has been, has been given in Exodus. That's where the Old Testament starts. Anyway, if you read through Genesis through Malachi, including the four Gospels and the eight chapters of the book of Acts, you are in that period called the past, the prophecy of Christ. Then, just do a little jump here. If you go and read in the scripture in the King James Bible, the letter of Hebrews to Revelation, you're reading the fulfilled prophecy, the law out of Israel on earth. And so you have Hebrews, then of course you got first and second Peter, first, second, third John, James, Jude, Revelation. This part here, the past and the future, which sadly the majority of churches preach from is reserved not to us but to the nation of Israel of the past and to the nation of Israel of the future. So where do you, where do we now fit in? Here, now. <laughs> this is called the mystery of Christ. The dispensation of the grace of God. Grace to the church rule in heaven okay and you find it in Paul's epistles so what is left of the scriptures the 13 letters from Romans to Philemon is where you and I anyone who wants to believe the truth will find his doctrine the sound Pauline doctrine to the body of Christ the banal so these are three main periods of this all dispensations in the Bible, in the King James. Now, I didn't make this up to the point that I'm going to read with you from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 2, from verse 1. And you, has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins? Now, you know, the Ephesians... They were Gentiles, and they were really wicked people, just like us, idolaters. Idolaters. They were living in idolatry. They had all sorts of false religions. You remember, they worshipped Diana, the goddess, in Ephesus. There was this big temple, the multi-breasted Diana, the, which practically goes back to fertility rites, Friends, they were wicked, just like us. And so now, they receive the gospel that Paul preaches. They got converted, and Paul is writing a letter to them, of course, by inspiration of the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. 
and it's telling them, which means it's telling you, it's telling me. And you has it quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein in time past, you see, in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. What is the course of this world? Well, go back here. We know, we know, don't we? Or we should know. That God created the heaven and the earth in the beginning. That's the time factor. God, the creator, created, created the heaven, space, and the earth, matter. Hmm? And he created everything fantastic, wonderful, good. He said it. at the end of each creation, he said it was good, it was good, it was very good. Then he created man in his image and likeness then. And with man he created a woman. He gave them the best environment, the best habitat, so to say, the best condition. He gave them a power, authority, dominion over his creation to be, so to say, the representative of God to reign, rule, and be, have dominion as God would have them to do. And they were in a state of innocence and joy and happiness until they fell with the temptation that Satan proposed and they went against the will of God who had told them not to do a certain things, not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil we know the story sin enters into the world Adam and Eve they get ejected from the garden for good reasons it's, this is not the thing we want to do today but it's just to, to go to the point and Adam starts to get children in his own image and likeness no more in the image of God a fallen creature Adam now a fallen creature gets children in his image and likeness. That's why humanity was in Adam before the fall in the image and likeness of God. No more. We are in the image and likeness of fallen sinner Adam. Okay? And Satan who managed to beguile Eve and trick and deceive Adam and Eve even though he deceived Eve, but bring this curse. God had to curse the creation. Hmm? He established this course, which is a very evil, wicked course. It's the course of this world. Now, the world, the word, world means also the system. We live in a satanic oriented against God, Antichrist kind of system already even now. Actually, humanity has been living like that since the beginning, since the fall. But God created his own nation. When you call Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they call this nation Israel, which means prince with God, reign with God, gave him the covenant, promises, the law later on. So practically the function now of Israel was to establish the rule of God on earth, the kingdom of God on earth, so that the Gentiles, the rest of the world, all the other people that were not Gentiles, could come to the knowledge, to the saving knowledge of the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, okay? But there is a course that, you know, the enemy has established. And this course is still going on. Yeah, because Christ came and brought salvation, but as you can see, unless, you know, you live in La La Land and you believe uh, the, the, the false preachers of religioni religiosity, especially, you know, this world of faith people, you know, that is all hunky-dory and, you know, with Jesus now, you know, you, you, you wear pinky, pinky glasses and everything is fantastic and 
you have uh, health, wealth, and prosperity, and the best life ever, you know, miracles, I mean, okay, Fantasyland, Disneyland, that would have, uh, call it the way you want, we still live in a very wicked, evil, present evil world, the situation, Christ solved one problem, very important, we'll see, but for, for what concerns the earth and the establishment of the kingdom of, of God on earth, this we, it's going to happen in the future. It's not happening now. To pray, let your kingdom come, is a wrong prayer to pray now because we are now in the dispensation of the grace of God. God's not building the, the kingdom, is is bo building the body. Let's see if I can say two words without blah, 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 making all the mistakes. <laughs> so let's see. Well, in, in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world. You wonder why there is so much wickedness in the world. There is a course established by Satan, who is called here the prince of the power of the air. Hmm? Think about this. The spirit that now works, works in the children of disobedience. Who are the children of disobedience? Are all these people, they are not saved yet. They still are in Adam, who is disobedient, the rebel, okay? Among whom also we all add our conversation. I like the fact that Paul is not sanctimonious, you know, like some people from the pulpit. They, they just try to, to convey this image that they are so whole in touch with God, so, but you, you are the sinner. No, no, Paul includes himself among whom also we all, we, concluded Paul, had our conversation. Conversation is not so much like we said today, talking, even though it includes that, but it's just a, a way of living. In rebellion against God. Humanity doesn't love God. People say, oh, I love the Lord. You are dreaming. You're not telling the truth. God has loved us even when we were his enemies but we are not capable to love god the way should be loved which is a perfect way we're not capable but wait a second don't worry because that's we go now see what god has done to correct to fix this problem among whom also we'll have the conversation in times past in the last plural of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and where by nature the children are rough even as others please notice children of disobedience children are rough that's really something we think that everybody you know when somebody dies especially if he's a personality on tv say rest in peace how can you say that do you really know if that person was saved nobody is going to rest in peace just because we say you know if a person is not saved the moment this person leaves this life anything but peace it's gonna be hell and then the lake of fire, the second death. And that's not peace. So, you know, think according to the word of God, according to the word of truth, not according the way of this world thinks, which is wrong. So, time pass, time pass. But God, Ephesians 2 4, but God, this two words but God but now they always announce something wonderful that God has done towards us human beings towards us sinners that we need his grace we need him in fact but God who is rich in mercy I love this mercy what is mercy? Mercy is not to give to you 
the guilty party, the, the sinner, what you deserve. Sparing you, huh? For his great love wherewith he loved us. This is really very, very powerful. I know that some grace believers, they don't want to go too much in this love thing because they think they think that people always, you know, oh, the love of God. No, love is important. Love is a characteristic of God. It's not the only characteristic or aspects of his nature, more than I say, you know, the nature. But this is really, in this case, the Holy Spirit put this emphasis for his great love. He didn't just say love. Wherewith he loved us, his past tense, because of what he did, even where we were dead in sins, remember, dead in sins and trespasses, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. You and I, we were not born. When Jesus Christ the Lord, and nobody knew, even knew that he was the Lord, Paul calls him the Lord Jesus Christ, eh? was on that cross of Calvary in the year A.D., Anno Domini 33, there outside of Jerusalem. Nobody knew Nobody understood why this wonderful person, man, young man, 33, who had performed miracles after miracles, delivered people possessed by the devil, healed the sick, the sick even raised dead, you know, dead people and so forth, fed multitudes. You know, the wonderful miracles you can read in the four Gospels to Israel, to his nation. There, there is like a criminal crucified between two criminals, one on the right and the left, and there he is. Yeah, yeah. God says here that God has quickened us together with Christ. He's given us life. When he was there on the cross, and he says, by grace he has saved. Straight away, he puts this emphasis by grace. It's talking about grace. It's talking about mercy. Now, mercy is not giving us, me, you, what we deserve, the punishment. The retribution, retribution, sorry, uh, for our evil actions. But grace is giving us what we don't deserve. Pardon, forgiveness, and salvation. And has raised up together, and has raised us up together, and made us sit together, made us sit together in heavenly places, in heavenly places. I got to repeat because my English is terrible. In Christ Jesus, please, Christ, Christ, Christ Jesus, in Him, not in religion, that in the ages to come. He might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. The exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Please let this God. It's so been and been so kind. He didn't have to do. Why in the world, you know, people think that God owes them anything. He doesn't. In our flesh, in our humanity, in Adam, we are despicable, ungodly sinners. In thoughts, words, and action, let's face it. You want a sweet. Sloppy, sugar-coated gospel that is not a gospel. So you can have all that you want the way you want it because the pastor told you so. But you got to stick to this word of truth, rightly divided, and see what God says. That if you have anything, it is by grace. It is because of the riches of his grace and his kindness towards us 
in Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus, because Jesus Christ our Lord, because by his cross, and explains it, for by grace are ye saved through faith. By grace you're saved now. No, you, you see, when you go into religion, you are in probation, not salvation. They say, yes, Jesus Christ died and so forth. But now, but now you have to show with a lifestyle, you know, that you are really saved and you are destined to total failure and bankrupt and despair. And probably you're going to turn your back completely go and go away because you can't, neither can I live the perfect life that we should, we ought live. Because you still got the flesh. Yes, Christ has paid for all our sins. Forgiveness being provided. Because God is not imputing sins now. That's amazing. And practically, he has provided by, by Christ forgiveness for all, for everybody. All right, but it needs to be appropriate, so to say, by faith, by believing the gospel, so that God can impute His righteousness. That's why here I am preaching this gospel, so that you wake up from this nightmare of religion you are in. Doesn't matter. I don't. I don't care. I don't mind if you are. Or one denomination or another denomination. I can name some. But, but there are so many. There are 40,000 plus denominations. And form of religiosity. On earth at the moment. Including the fact that there is also Islam. And uh, Hindu. You know. Uh, animism. And New Age. There are so many forms. Works of the flesh. Useless, pointless religion. That going to make sure that you split out when you when you die but here god is saying for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god now some brothers here in the grace movement say that this grace is because the faith of christ others say this is the gift of god the salvation i say both are valid not that Christ didn't did, uh, need to have faith in God as we do, but faith, Christ believed, he knew, he was sure 100% that what God has promised would do. It is the gift of God. Please, please, the gift of God. God gives you a gift. Why do you want to pay for that? You don't need to, to show anything to God. He knows you. He knows me. He knows us from the inside out. He knows us before we are born. He knows what is in man. He knows what is in, in us. Is the spirit, the, the condition of Adam. Rebellious. We are all sinners. The scripture is very clear. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All means all. It meant all then, now, and tomorrow. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Which means we are sinners. Huh? Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He didn't come to condemn us. Nobody knew it. But that's why it's been given the revelation of this glorious mystery. The grace of God and the, the fact that Christ was going to save sinners like us without the law, without Israel, without covenants, giving us a free gift. It is the gift of God. Not the works, lest any man should boast. How can we boast in the presence of Almighty God? This God is not, you know, like the God of the heathen. It's not a statue. It's not a system. It's not rules and regulations. A religious system. This is the living God. You never seen him. I never seen him. But his creation is all around us. Look up into the heaven 
and see the stars and the sun and the moon that go around this plane which we live, the earth, and the stars that, you know, continually turn the luminaries, you know, the stars, the sun and the moon, and then we, we look at the creation on earth, you know, even if this earth went through a flood, which means through a lot of destruction, it's still so beautiful, but it's nothing in comparison to what we are going to enjoy with the Lord in heavenly places, and even earth is going to be a new earth because he's going to create a new heavens and new earth. He is a powerful, almighty, glorious, holy God. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. This is not a legalistic thing. This is to make you understand that now, saved, you can learn how to walk in the good works. And the good works here are not, you know, just humanitarian things. You know, you go and help the poor and so forth. You can do that, okay. But preaching the word, the truth, rightly divided because there are millions and millions and millions and millions of people that have no idea that God has done this wonderful, glorious, provided this wonderful, glorious salvation as a free gift to all who simply believe. You see, in the book of Romans it says that God has put all under sin. So every mouth, you know, must stop, shut up. Don't boast, don't go around, ah, I've done this, I'm better than you. Forget it. But God has put all under sin so that all may receive mercy and grace and salvation as a free gift. Once you understand this, you cannot go on with your religion. I tell you now, whatever it is, if you're Roman Catholic or Protestant, you can be Evangelical, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal. You will stop. You can't because you understand all of a sudden say, wow, that would be an offense. That would be becoming an enemy of the cross because God has done it. And now I'm trying to, you know, do my works. And so practically I make the, 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 the cross of Christ of none effect. I'm fallen from grace. I go into works when salvation is by by faith, by grace, through faith. But for remember that he in being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Oh, these people, you need to understand this. Wherefore remember that ye being time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. I need to explain because many of you haven't got an idea. The circumcision in the flesh, every Israeli boy, huh, on the eighth day, eighth day, eighth day from birth, had to be circumcised. This was the sign of circumcision given to Israel. Okay? On the eighth day, apparently, is the moment in which the vitamin K, the coagulant vitamin is more as the peak in the body. So the Creator told Moses, that's the law, on the eighth day. Okay? So you were circumcised in the flesh, on the eighth day you belonged to the nation of Israel. You were no more a Gentile. With a separation unto God. But the others, the Gentiles were not Israeli, they were called uncircumcised, so they didn't receive this circumcision. But this is talking about circumcision in the flesh made by hands. At that time, you were without Christ. If your pastor, whoever it is, because some people have women pastors, even, you know, man or woman, tells you that you are the new Israel, the spiritual Israel, is deceiving you. 
is this is, at the moment Israel has fallen Israel has stumbled has fallen is in a condition of law my is not my people God says this I didn't say that because they rejected the father in the Old Testament they reject the son in the New Testament to the point they crucify the king they reject the king and the kingdom and they blaspheme against the Holy Spirit who was talking through the mouth of Stephen in, in the Acts uh, chapter 7 when they stoned Stephen to death and Paul at that time so was present consenting to this stoning to death of Stephen so the nation stumbled at the stumbling block a rock uh, you want to call it Christ the cross the Messiah and they committed the blasphemy and God gave you see between Acts 2 and Acts 7 one year one year of extra you know extension of grace to, to give them an opportunity to understand and be saved they they rejected him Israel has fallen now they're blind they're fallen so if the pastor is telling you you are the spiritual Israel he is deceiving you maybe he's deceived himself I don't want to say at all costs he's uh, you know wicked that he knows but but hey man there is a lot of money involved in those churches if they can keep you under their bondage they know you're going to give tidings and offerings for all the course of your Christian life if you persevere. Because anyway, there is a turn, I say, uh, turn out every seven years. People can't take it anymore and they leave those churches. So they continue to preach this stuff. So they'll have the flow of money coming in. Look, you know, you know yourself. Look, open your eyes. See it, that is for the love of money, which is the root of all evil. Not money, but the love of money that do these things. But, you see what it says. At that time, for example, when Christ was walking the, the, the streets of Jerusalem, of Israel, you were without Christ. We were excluded, being aliens from the Commonwealth of Israel. We didn't have any part with them and strangers from the covenants of promise and we still are strangers we are not under covenants we are under grace i go really i don't know i suffer so much to see this because i've been in that for a long time more than 40 years can you imagine only by the grace of god i came to find out the right division of the word of truth and the dispensation of the grace of god and the fact that we have one apostle Paul and we have one glorious message, the gospel of Christ to preach, which she requires no works on your part, but simple trust, faith in what Christ has done on your, for your benefit. Anyway, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope please realize this and without God in the world that's the condition of humanity they have no hope even though all sins have been forgiven they have no hope because they don't, they don't believe that so this glorious salvation and forgiveness of sin provided that doesn't become the, their lot because they don't believe yeah their sins have been forgiven but they reject the, for, the one who provided this, Christ, they don't consider Christ the Lord and Savior, Redeemer, eh? the head of the body. And they lose the free gift because they want to give works to God. And this goes so much against the dispensation of the grace of God. That's why, please study, read. If you can't study because you think it's just read one, two, three times the book of Romans and see how the Holy Spirit will, will tell you that if you work, you out. But if you don't work, but you believe in him who raised in Christ from the dead, your faith is counted as righteousness. If you believe, you are saved. If you believe that he has done and know that you doing it done by God himself by Christ so this was our condition see here let's go back here 
in this time, time past. Huh? But now, I told you, but God, but now. <laughs> very, very good. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye. You see, it's plural. You is singular in English. Ye is plural. So, ye, the Ephesians, ye, you, now, they listen to this. Who sometimes were afar off, far off, away, and made nigh, near, by the blood of Christ. Not by the water of the baptism. By the blood of Christ. Man, I tell you now, you can get, get water baptized by sprinkling, by immersion, by whatever, in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Every day of life, and you will go to hell. Water baptized cannot save you. And it's a sign of a covenant. And you have no covenant with God. We have no covenant. We're not Israel. It's written here. Why do I get so hot? Because, because I see this all the time. Every time I go on the internet and look at the sites of other Christian churches, I see these errors, heresies, mistakes, call it the way you repeat it. Now, it's not so much the problem with the water. The fact that say that that's it, man. You repent of your sins, confess your sins, get water baptized, and you're saved. No! You are saved by grace, through faith, no works. The faith of Christ, the gift of God, and that's it. And the blood of Christ. Without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. The blood has been shed, praise God, to the last drop and paid, completed, and satisfied the demand of justice that God had on us. Because he's the just and the justifier of the one who believes in Christ, in Jesus. God doesn't just forgive you because, okay, I close my eyes, I because I'm good, so I forgive you. No! The price, the debt price has been paid, needed to be paid. You and I couldn't pay. Your pastor couldn't pay. Your mother and father and sister and children and grandsons and granddaughters and your ancestors who... Oh, Nobody can pay. We are children of Adam in the flesh. Unclean. You understand? Sinners. Children of disobedience. Children of wrath. But God, <laughs> but now, He has given us salvation through the blood of Christ. And now we have made nigh. We are very. For He is our peace. Thank you, Lord. That's why grace and peace, grace and peace. Who has made both one. Who both one? The Jews, the Gentiles now, in the body of Christ, are a new creature, a part of the new creature, is a new reality. We lose even our national connotation. We can keep it on a passport. Okay, you are Israeli, born there. I, I was born in Italy and I was born in America. But spiritually speaking, now you are part of the body of Christ and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. There is no more partition between Jews and Gentiles. Jesus Christ has broken it down. God has broken it down. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. People want to live by the law. Obey the commandments. Because Jesus said... You are my friends if you do what I say. Yes, he was talking to Israel and he was totally right because Jesus is always right in the dispensation of the law as well in the dispensation of grace. But you need to understand to whom is he speaking, in, w in which time, in which context, to what purpose, to what goal, what comes before, what comes after. He was talking, whatever he was telling to his little flock, to his little flock, to his nation, Israel, it doesn't apply to you. Having abolished in his flesh the empty, even the law or commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself a twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both 
unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the empty thereby. Only the wisdom, the intelligence, and the power of God could do this. That's why Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God unto salvation to anyone who believes, to the Jew first and to the Greek also. Only God could conceive this plan that through the cross of his son, shedding that precious blood, the Jew and the Gentile alike could not only get saved, but become one body in Christ. And having slain the empty, a reconciliation has been effectuated. Read, read Romans, Second uh, uh, Corinthians chapter f uh, 5 from 14 downwards when it talks about that God was in Christ, reconciled the world unto himself. And we now as ambassadors for Christ, minister of reconciliation, we, we implore you, be ye reconciled to, to God. How? By believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. But by understanding Jesus Christ is the Lord, is the Savior, the Redeemer, He has done it all. You need to do nothing, simply believe, confide, and you are saved without moving one little finger. Thank you, Jesus. And came, Jesus, and preached peace to you, which were afar off. The Ephesians were far away, and to them they were nigh, you know. Those that were proselytes or they were Jews, they were, now we all come in this new reality, the, the body of Christ. In fact, it says, for through him, through him who? Jesus. We both have access by one spirit unto the Father. We are reconciled now. Romans 5.1 being justified by faith, we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not through, oh, you confess your sin, and so now I'm all cleansed, and now, and then you sin again, and then you confess. That's not having access. That's not having a relation or, or fellowship with God. That's a, a, a religious game that's going to destroy you. It's done. For through him, we both have access. No, we're going eventually. Now, now, by one spirit, the Holy Spirit, of course, one spirit, the Holy Spirit, unto the Father. So you see here, people say, I don't believe that God is Father and Son, Holy Ghost. You know. Through Him, Jesus Christ. By one spirit, the Holy Spirit, unto the Father, Father God. I mean, come on. I just accept what is written here. Because this is the word of truth. This is the word of God. God doesn't play with us. We play. We play a lot, but to our own damage. Don't. Just look. I can't convince you. I can't force you. But if you don't believe this book, I don't know what kind of hope you have. What kind of Jesus you're imagining? You know, the Jesus from the movies of Zeffirelli, Hollywood, you know, the one who was married to Mary Magdalene or whatever. This is crazy stuff. The Da Vinci Code. Why? Why you want to listen to the devil, the deceiver? <laughs> Once there is a God that loves you, and I loved you so much because of Christ. And that's why, you know, it tells you now the Ephesians, you know, you were in this condition. But now, you see, now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. <laughs> We are united in this glorious reality and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together grows unto a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also build it, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Do you understand now the building is a spiritual one? No, my friend. Okay, let's say you, you, you go in a building with, to meet with other brothers and sisters to study this word, rightly divided, to learn what God wants 
so that you can preach this to other people. That's a building, a meeting place. But not what people say, let's go to church. Are you crazy? You are part of the, cra- of the church if you're a believer, saved by grace. You say, but this is a silly detail. No, it's not. Because the way we speak gives away the, what we believe. We are not Jews that we got a temple in Jerusalem that we go to the temple. Do you understand? Hmm. The temple has been destroyed in the year 70 by the Romans. In whom he also built it together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. See, the law requires be righteous. The verdict, no one is righteous. The gospel, Jesus is our righteousness. So let's go back here and consider again. Well, you know, the Bible it can, be, can be intimidating. It's a big book, 66 books. But once you understand this, sub, this division, okay, maybe I speak English one day when I grow up. <laughs> I'm not born English, I'm sorry. Prophecy of Christ, from the law to Israel in the earth, Genesis through Malachi, including Matthew, Acts 8, bound. That's an interruption. Now there is the call and commissioning of Paul, a new apostle for a new dispensation, the revelation of the mystery of Christ, a dispensation of grace to the church, which is his body. So the church is not a building, it's the body of Christ. Rule in heaven, we will rule in heaven, praise God Almighty. And it's written in the, uh, the epistles of Paul from Romans to Philemon, that needs to be read, studied, read and divided. Even that, to see also when Paul is talking to Jews or to Gentiles, not to mix the two programs. And then it's going to be the future. Now this mystery of Christ will end, or this dispensation of grace, We'll end here when Christ comes to take his ambassadors, his body, to heaven. And he will come back a second time, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Jesus Christ, to his nation. The first coming here in the gospel and the future coming is to them, not to us. For us, he comes via rapture, okay? To take us when the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. When he knows, only he knows, his body is complete and we are ready to be taken in the heavenlies. Three main periods of dispensation in the Bible. So please, go and read for yourself Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1, from verse 1 to verse 22. And see, with the help of this website, see this. Friends, this website is called graceclips.com. I put here a lot of stuff concerning the dispensation of grace. The goal of the website is to see souls saved, saved, souls saved, and believers edified. This happens through the preaching of the word, the truth, rightly divided, as is written in 2 Timothy 2.15. I'm not body, but I preach this glorious word, the truth, and this word, the truth, will bring salvation to you because Christ is the Savior. Christ and no one else. Have a great day.